Welcome to the Block of Rock, the show where we're going to do time travels back to the 80s. And I'm really, really proud and happy to introduce Mr. Mark Weiss today. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. People know you, of course, as the Weiss guy, but most of the people uh, might have, haven't seen your face, but they know your photos because uh, people will have lots of records in their archives with your photos on or inside. So maybe you give a short introduction, who you are, what you're doing. Okay, it's Mark Weiss. Uh, I started when I was 12 mowing lawns and a guy gave me his camera for mowing his lawn for the season, you know? So, you know, I knocked on his door and his lawn was really long and I said, do you, you need your lawn cut? And he said, no, I do it myself. And then he's like, he thought I was like a smart ass and he came back with his camera. He said, I'll tell you what kid, if you, you know, you mow the lawn, I'll give you this for the season, you know, and, and, and I did, and the rest was history. From, that, from then on, I started going, you know, taking pictures of my, my dog and my brother, riding his motorcycle, and then I went to concerts, uh, stuck my camera in, and then it kind of just snowballed into shooting concerts, and that's where I got my love of taking photographs. <laughs> was it difficult at that time to sneak in with the camera? Well, yeah, I used to take, I used to wear fry boots. Fry boots are these big boots that you put on the, you know, they're huge. And I used to pick, put a lens in there. I used to wear a hoodie with the camera strapped to the back. So when they, you know, pat you down, you can go through it, you know? So I did that. And then I, once I got in a good spot, I would, you know, put everything together and uh, start taking pictures, you know, just sneaking in as a 15, 16 year old kid. And uh, I've heard that there's a story that you got arrested after taking pictures. Well, yeah, at a KISS concert in 1977, I was, again, I was sneaking in. I was selling my pictures at the time. So I would go in, like, say, KISS would play the first night. I would take pictures, sneak in, and then blow them up for the, that night, maybe make 100 or two and sell them for a buck a piece. So this time after the concert, I was selling them, and I, you know, you know, I knew it was illegal, but, you know, I was making a buck to, make, to buy a film for the next show. And so I ended up in the paddy wagon with uh, all the shirt sellers. And the next day, you know, they said, if you want to come back and claim your, you know, your, pro your, you know, your photos, you'll have to, you know, go in front of the judge. I'm like, just keep them, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll see you later. And then, and then like the next day, I was like, what am I going to do now? And I just went to Circus Magazine, which was a you know, big rock magazine, one of the biggest, you know, and I used to read it since I was 12, 13. And I just went there. There's an address in there. I took my, I had a subscription. So I looked at the address and I just went there with my portfolio and the secretary took a liking to me and said, you know what? It's, you know, the art director is off deadline today. Why don't you, um, why don't you wait a, a couple hours when he's off and then I'll have you come in. So I waited like maybe three, four hours, waited patiently. And then they went and saw me. I showed them my photography and they liked what I did, but they wanted me to shoot uh, with flash and with a different film and a couple couple things that that magazine required so I they said all right well come back when you think you have something and that summer 1978 I shot Aerosmith, Ted Nugent and I think Journey was a Mahogany Rush and uh, I had some really, yeah I had some really really good photos of Aerosmith they weren't letting it, too many photographers shoot them because it, they were like in the dark days and you know, they didn't want it, you know, they were not giving out photo passes. So I had my camera snuck in, sent them the pictures. And then two months later, I went to the newsstand and I saw in the magazine, it was the biggest picture in, in the, uh, you know, in the magazine, it was the centerfold of Steven Tyler. And that's, that's where the ball started rolling, you know. And did you realize that this could be your future business, not only a hobby? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it was... Uh, it was, I just wanted, it was just fun. When I was 12, I had a motorcycle accident to go back a little bit and it hit my head. I got a concussion and I lost a, my memory from then on. And then after that, I really could remember things. And so I never did good in school, but photography was just like, you click a button, you know, that's it. To me, that's all it was. It was very easy. You just pick it up, look through it. Oh, that looks good. Click. So that's when I knew I had to just keep going with it because I felt it gave me confidence, you know what I mean? So, you know, okay. it gave me confidence to, you know, and, and then I started standing out like all the, you know, the girls and the cool guys in the school. I started getting attention from because I had these pictures. I used to sell them out of my locker. And, uh, it, you know, it's just, 
I, I kind of knew like, what else am I going to do? You know? So, but I still went to college to keep my parents happy. I still went through the motions as I was working for circus magazine. I was still going to college, you know, to keep the parents happy. And, and it just didn't, didn't work out. And then I'm, making a living already, you know, doing cons, you know, photographing. I started working for circus and, and making money with other magazines. So after the first year of college, I just, I kind of said, that's it. You know, I kind of, I didn't even tell my parents I, I left college after the first semester. It wasn't for me. <laughs> I told them actually what I told them when I, I showed them my first picture in circus, the centerfold. And I said, you know, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you two things. First thing, I dropped out of college and you know, and the second thing is I'm working for circus magazine and I showed them the picture, you know, so. How did they react? They were very supportive. You know, they're, you know, they're, my father didn't go to college. So he, well, of course he wants his son to go to college. You know, my father was a, was a aluminum siding salesman and you know, he turned himself into his own business and was very successful. Uh, but he was the salesman. So, and my mother was in public relations. And uh, so I kind of got a little bit of both of them in me, you know, my, my father's salesmanship and my mother's press, you know, in instinct. So let's test your memory and let's go back to the 80s. Let's do a little time travel. And I think the 80s is the decade that rocked most. And finally, you just are about to release the book under the same name. So, You, did you collect all the pictures to make this beautiful book? I had a look already into it. I mean, at first, it's, I signed the contract with my publisher seven years ago. And it was first, it was just going to be a simple book. I was going to, because I didn't, it was just so overwhelming to just do a book the way it ended up. So I wanted something simple. So I said, why don't we just do photos of the hair bands? It'd be easy, you know, just take a photo of, you know, every band, you know, or person that had the, at their highest. And, uh, you know, I started doing it and then I started thinking to myself, you know, I don't want that to be my first book. You know, that's, you know, that doesn't say who I am. And so after two years of working on that, not really feeling it, I just decided to change course and, and wanted to do a narrative book, you know, about me, how I became a photographer and, uh, you know, turning it into a career and a lifestyle and, you know, how it, you know, And, and, uh, you know, so the book starts out when I was 12, you know, and I got my camera and I talk about it. And then, I, you know, I have some pictures of like Peter Frampton, Led Zeppelin, uh, some early Aerosmith, 76, you know, well, you know, up until, uh, I think 79, I shot, and I shot Sammy Hager in there too. I put that in there, you know, anything rock related. I mean, I shot a lot of other kind of stuff too, but I really wanted to lend itself to where I felt. 80s rock kind of, you know, kind of evolved from. And I felt like it evolved from those bands that I, that I picked for the book. And then, um, and then 1979, I shot Judas Priest for the first time. And I kind of end that chapter, the early years um, with that. And uh, it's a, it's a shot of uh, Rob and KK. It's like an amazing photo. I'm really proud of that one. And then, then it goes into the 1980, you know, ACDC, you know, uh, uh, They had a party at Privates, a small club in New York City. David Coverdale came and Brian Johnson was there and they had balloons that said ACDC. So I start the, I start the, the chapter of 1980 with, that, with those two photographs. And then, um, and it just kind of evolves. Like, you know, so I had to do it very systematically, like, because when I decided that's what I wanted to do it, I, didn't, I dealt with each year at a time. I couldn't just think of the whole thing. It would have been just mind blowing, you know? So, so I took every year really seriously, like, like over, I mean, I overdid it, you know, I overdid it so much that this 278 page book, which ended up being 400 pages, I designed it to be 600 pages, <laughs> but I had to do it. I had to, it, that was the process, you know? And a lot of the photographs in, in, Each chapter, you know, I had to really decide who's going to go in and when and where and who I'm going to leave out. So it really came down to shoots that really meant a lot to me and also to the artists and also to the fans. What do you think, what made the 80s so memorable, a, a part of all the other decades you, you lived in? 
because you know you picked this special uh, decade. It's the same for me because it was the uh, decade of my later youth when I was uh, 15. The 80s started uh, for you a bit later. But what made the 80s so special? Well, the 70s were kind of my special to me because it's where I kind of learned learned everything. You know, it's where I you know I knew I loved Led Zeppelin. I knew I loved Kiss. I knew I loved Aerosmith, Ted Nugent. You know, I knew I loved all these bands. And then when the 80s came uh, in New Jersey, I started photographing this one band called White Tiger. And uh, White Tiger and Twisted Sister were the big club bands in the area. And you only had to be 18 to be in, get in the clubs, you know. So I was 18 and I can get into the clubs and, you know, it was a whole scene, you know. They would, play, you know, Twisted would play mostly uh, their originals, but they have covers too. But White Tiger was just all covers, and they played Led Zeppelin and ACDC, you know, anything that was going on, Judas Priest. And they started dressing that way, and then the girls started flocking in, and it was a way to, you know, find, uh, you know, company for the night. You know, you go to the rock show, and you end up with a girl. <laughs> so, And then there's me with the camera in the front, you know, looking around, seeing everybody. So it was just... It, it's it's where you know i ended up and the 80s that was just the beginning of everything it's like it feels like all those bands from the 80s uh you know they took all the bands from the 70s like sweet and bowie and t-rex and you know all led zeppelin and and they kind of like mixed it up together and they turned it into the super rock star like what like what, what the dictionary would have meant you know and then mtv came around and it's like image was so important you know just as much as yeah. the music and i think all these and i heard them talking about it you know when i we've been doing these interviews they would take all these you know rock stars from the 70s and like emulate them but emulate them and go a little further with it you know and 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 fine tune it you know so their costumes were more defined, you know, where in the seventies, they, I'm sure they just had, you know, a friend do it. And then, you know, but now, now it was a business like rock and roll fashion was a total business. And I just got part of, I was part of the equation. You know, you do a photo shoot with me, I get into the magazines, I do the album cover, you do a, uh, a video with Wayne Isham or Marty Kohlner. And, you know, it was a certain formula. So I was in the very, beginning of the 80s I became part of that you know the visual imagery that became uh you know to me the decade that rocked you know it's uh, <laughs> you know I I think it's uh you know I just I love the title I love the name and I'm I'm you know I'm branding the name now I'm you know I created a uh, a Facebook dedicated to the inspire what I say inspired by the decade that rocked uh the by my book the decade that rocked and my photography the decade that rocked so on those uh, Instagrams uh, at the decade that rocked and my Facebook, it, it is about me and as photography and my photography, but I'll put album covers that aren't mine. I'll put, you know, I'll put anniversaries and birthdays and little things in this and that. So it's pr you know, pretty much m me, but as opposed to having, uh, and I have Instagram Mark Weiss photography and Instagram and Facebook too, but I wanted to appeal to, um, uh, younger audience because the demographics now it's funny I, I check my views on my uh, interviews and it seems like they're from 25 to 35 and then 55 to 65 <laughs> okay it's like the 35 I don't know so that's what you know when I look at the look at the um you know the graph it's interesting and I and I I I think it's because of the dirt and all the rock and roll yeah yeah of course. so it's the kids of the original fans yeah.